Right now on Channel 3 Eyewitness News, fire crews respond to three fires in Bonneville County this afternoon. And a local tech high school is working to add another program for future farmers. Plus, Rexburg has big plans for its airport. Channel 3 Eyewitness News begins now. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Bree Clark. Thank you so much for joining us. Todd Coons, he has the night off. Well, fire officials say they have contained multiple fires in the Bonneville County foothills. Three fires started this afternoon along Foothill Drive. The cause of those fires are still unknown. Fire officials say no structures are threatened, there are no evacuations, and no one was hurt. They are still taking precautions because of the dry conditions and wind. Right now we have uh, wildland firefighting units attacking the fire, and we have some structure fire protection units staged with water tenders in case this fire goes out of control uh, and threatens the structures on the hill. It's a pretty dry area. Johnson wants to remind people to be careful. He says anything can start a fire in these dry conditions. Now, TVs, ATVs, motorcycles, shootings, and things like that are all on that list. Well, Idaho Falls firefighters are investigating a car explosion. A Jeep burst into flames about an hour ago on Highway 26 near 55th East, just north of Idaho Falls. The fire has since been put out, but these images sent to us from a viewer caught the blaze in full force. Fire officials say they are unsure of what caused the car to explode into flames, but no one was hurt. And fire managers are asking for international help due to all the wildfires in the West. Australia and New Zealand are sending firefighters to the western United States to help. Details are still being worked out. The firefighters are expected to arrive in Boise on Sunday. The last time the U.S. asked for help from Australia and New Zealand was in 2008, which takes us over to our weather with Steve Cannon. So, you know, the haze from all of those fires, it's not going away anytime soon, is it? No, it's not, Bree. There's just too much of it to go anywhere out of the region. Let's show you where those smoke where the smoke is heaviest at this hour. You'll see this from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Thanks to the cold front, the heaviest smoke has moved into portions of the Dakotas and the High Plains. There's still plenty around our neighborhood, as is evidenced by this picture looking north from Marsh Valley High School toward McCammon up I-15. Pocatello is reporting plenty of smoke at this hour. We've got temperatures nicely into the mid-80s. But wind speeds are the big concern this afternoon as we put that, fine, that camera into motion and, again, show you that those temperatures. A little shower activity in northern Idaho, that's good. We'd like a little more in and around our area, but check it out. 32 mile an hour sustained winds in Idaho Falls, 22 miles an hour in Arco, 20 mile an hour winds in Montpelier. Meanwhile, nearly calm in Malad and in West Yellowstone. Salmon's not bad at this hour. But the air quality alert is still in effect for all of Idaho, and that means no open fires, period. You can't burn in Idaho. You can't have a campfire. You can't burn a ditch bank. You can't burn in Idaho, period. And the red flag warnings are still out for extreme fire danger. High winds, warm temperatures, gusty conditions, low humidity. So fire continues to be a major problem, and the smoke and haze will remain with us at least for the weekend with cool temperatures, though. In fact, tomorrow's going to get downright nippy uh, by summer standards. We'll talk to that come about that coming up. All right. Thank you, Steve. We'll over to our education watch. The Technical Careers High School says it's about time in Idaho Falls. They are now offering an agricultural program for its students. Starting this fall, students will have the chance to take classes in both plant and animal science. This is the first agricultural program of its kind in the area. TCHS believes this is long overdue with the amount of students that live on farms or have some sort of agriculture in their everyday lives. We have a lot of people in our area, especially being a rural, uh, a largely rural district. Um, we have a lot of farmers, ranchers in our area that have students that go to our school. And it's been a request um, for many years to have an agriculture education program. The school says the new teachers' excitement and experience will be beneficial to the students. For more information on this, you can head to our website at kdk.com. And Micron Technology is planning a $200 million expansion at its Boise campus. The company, which develops computer memory and storage, 
plans to expand research and development by 30 percent with a major building project. Officials say construction is expected to begin this October and should be completed by 2017. The company did not say how many jobs the expansion will bring to the area. Currently, there are about 6,000 Micron employees in the state of Idaho. And going off to college can be liberating for most college students. I know it was for me. Independence brings new responsibilities, and some say one of those should include getting renter's insurance. Eyewitness News reporter Esme Cariega joins us live in our Pocatello newsroom. Esme, why is this so important? Bree agencies say it could save you a lot of money in the long run. Parents' homeowners insurance covers students who live on campus. For students who live off campus, their property could be at risk of theft. In establishing a residence at college, uh, their personal property isn't automatically covered by the landlord. They need to take steps to talk to an agent and get coverage on things like laptop computers. Jackman also says that books and bikes are all covered by renter's insurance, and agencies could even offer perks when you add it to your auto insurance. Reporting live from the Pocatello Newsroom, I'm Esme Cariega. All right, thank you so much for that information, Esme. Well, Jackman also encourages students to keep receipts for large purchases that they may make. Well, the Idaho National Laboratory will soon have a new director. Battelle Energy Alliance has named Mark Peters as the new director. He will take over on October 1st. Peters succeeds John Grossenbacher, who announced in November he would be retiring. Well, the city of Rexburg is looking at making some major changes to its airport. Eyewitness News reporter Allison Zimmerman, she stopped by the airport today, and she joins us live in our newsroom, Allison. Bree, the city's looking at two proposals, either expanding the current runway or relocating the airport completely. And there's also the option of not changing the airport at all, which is currently getting some minor construction done to it. Since 1962, the Rexburg Airport has flown in jets on this runway. Now it's needing a bit of a facelift and possibly a new home. Now's a good time, because obviously as we move into the, into the future and with growth, if you're to relocate an airport, it gets more difficult just because with growth, it's harder to find a, a spot. Right now, there are two proposals on the table. The city is either looking at expanding this runway you see behind me or completely relocating the airport. 30 years from now, we want to look back and say we did the right thing. As it stands right now, the Rexburg Airport brings in private jets and small business planes. This runway length would probably be fine if we were down at sea level, but with our altitude, it changes uh, the nature of the aircraft flying in. The changes would also be more inviting for larger businesses hoping to come to Rexburg. Letters from, from people saying that they would, if the airport was bigger, that they would fly in. If the airport master plan goes through, then it could bring almost a thousand new jobs from each business to the area based on the businesses that would want to do business in Rexburg. The businesses that currently fly into Idaho Falls to do business in Rexburg face some challenges. They want to be able to come up from wherever they're at. Maybe it's Las Vegas, maybe it's Salt Lake, maybe it's California do their business and be back home by mid-afternoon to conduct further business. Something businesses feel they can't do with the Idaho Falls Airport. The ultimate goal is that this plan will provide growth and keep up with businesses and people that want to come in and develop the Rexburg community. The airport's one of a one leg of a five-legged five stool. All of these things come together to try to make uh, what we consider a good community to come and live in and do business in. The airport doesn't anticipate having scheduled airlines come to the Rexburg Air Airport, but the airport board chairman ultimately hopes that this is just going to suit the needs of the community to help it grow. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Allison Zimmerman. All right, thank you so much, Allison. Well, if the plan goes through, the changes wouldn't go into full effect for at least 10 years. A double downs betting sports and bar grill is looking to move shop. Now, this is in light of the highly controversial slot like betting machines over the past year. The company has officially filed an application to move their historic horse racing operations to Sandy Downs in Idaho Falls. They are one of the three locations in the state allowed to operate the machines. Owners Jim and Melissa Bernard submitted the application July 13th. Now, to the Community Development Services Department, according to the plans, they are looking to build a 
17,000 square foot building in an empty section of the racetrack. Melissa Bernard, CEO of Intermountain Horse Racing, says if approved, the move won't be easy, but they are up for the challenge. So the governor was very clear in his veto message that it was not their intent to have these off track, and we're just trying to be right by our community and our legislature and our governor. We want to do what he said, and, and we want to find a way, if it's approved and our community embraces us, to get back to the track. A conditional use permit will be reviewed on September 1st. At that time, the public will have a chance to voice any concerns that they may have. And fishing is a popular recreational activity here in the gym state. The main catch for today is the grand opening of the ISU Gone Fishing Exhibit. The exhibit features interactive games and learning activities. There are a number of one-of-a-kind art pieces on display as well. Museum staff say the goal of the exhibit is to hook visitors on learning about native wildlife, especially fish. Everything from trout that we know of all the way down to these little minnow type fish that we call daces and chubs. There's a lot of different fish, more than just the ones that we think of, of the, of, of the fish that we catch for food. We also have large sturgeon all the way down to the smallest little fish. Now, if you are interested in touring the exhibit, a dinner party is being held tonight in the ISU squad. It goes on until 8 p.m. tonight. And moving over to our health watch, I mean, have you ever reached for a pain reliever or other medicine to find that it has an old expiration date? Now, don't throw it out. You, you may just have something on your hands here. Reporter Cole Azuz, he has more in today's Health Minute. Using an expired drug is probably okay if you have a minor health issue such as a headache or sinus trouble. If your condition is serious, don't chance it. Many medicines, especially tablets and capsules, have a shelf life well beyond the date on the bottle, experts say. The reality is because these expiration dates are so conservative, probably even five to ten years from the time of the expiration date, a person can still try using their product. Manufacturers guarantee their drugs will be safe and fully effective up until the expiration date, which is usually one to five years after it's produced. But even with medications that are long expired, the amount of effectiveness is usually over 90 percent. There are certain medicines, however, that should not be used beyond the expiration date, often because they treat chronic conditions such as heart disease or diabetes where 100 percent potency is crucial. Nitroglycerin, which quickly loses its effectiveness after you open the bottle, insulin, vaccines, suspension type antibiotics that you have to refrigerate, eye drops that are kept in a preservative bottle. To help your meds stand the test of time, store them in a cool, dry place away from sunlight and in their original containers. Well, if you think swimming is difficult, try swimming high in the air in what many are calling a sky pool. That's coming up later. Saturday's coming up. A couple of things you need to know about Saturday. One, it's going to be a cool Saturday. Two, we're still going to have the smoke, the haze, the red flag advisories, the air quality advisory, and the wind, while breezy, is not going to blow you away like it did today. The temperature fluctuations, mm-hmm, 73 tomorrow, near 90 as we get into the first part of the work week. Back with a flexible forecast coming up. And now, your first alert forecast with Steve Cannon. Well, not only do we have the smoke and haze to worry about, with all the gusty winds on I-15 north of the Osgoode Interchange, we've got blowing dust now to add a little zest to the life. See the camera bouncing in Idaho Falls? We're looking toward the foothills to see if any of those spot fires are erupting again. Temperatures are still fairly mild. Cold front has yet to blow through, but blow through is the key word. Look at those winds sustained at 32 miles an hour. Temperatures aren't bad. We're still in the 80s from Rexburg south to Malad, but we're starting to see the increase. Look at this. We've got temperatures still in the 70s at Stanley, so it's warm. This is the warm before the cold front. Now, what we could use is a little of this. Well, what we could use is a lot of this down here. And it's coming. Uh, not a lot, but it is coming. Now, the dry cold front's going to push through tonight. Behind that front, there's going to be some cooler temperatures. The winds will subside as well. And check out Vipercast. It actually has a hint of some scattered clouds and showers in the neighborhood. Now, it's all east of the Continental Divide tonight. And as we roll through Saturday, there's nothing out there to report. But as we get longer into next week, particularly the latter part of next week, 
Watch this. This is some subtropical moisture that actually looks like it may start to slide a little closer to home. And we like the sound of that. In the meantime, we're still going to deal with fair skies, some breezy conditions tonight, and some smoke as well. 35 in Stanley, 40 in Mackey, 44 in Arco and Salmon. Tomorrow's temperatures, though, well into the 80s today. We'll be lucky to get into the mid to upper 70s tomorrow. Overnight tonight for the southern Snake River Plains, near 50 degrees for an overnight low, a high temperature on Saturday, only in the lower to mid-70s. Again, with a lot of smoke in the neighborhood, not much in the way of cloud cover, however. We're expecting overnight lows to be in the upper 40s to low 50s tonight for the upper Snake River Plain. A high temperature tomorrow, again, lower to mid-70s, 75 at the INL, about the warmest we'll find. Tonight, it's going to be chilly in the high country, 34 in West Yellowstone, 41 in Island Park in Jackson. A high temperature tomorrow, only in the low 60s in West Yellowstone and Island Park, 66 in Jackson. We'll see 70s in the Upper Valley. And overnight lows from 41 at Pinedale tonight to 52 in Preston. But check out tomorrow's highs, 67 in Pinedale and only 75 degrees in Preston. Don't worry, cool down won't last long. We're going to be back to 90 degree highs for Monday and Tuesday for the southern Snake River Plain. But Wednesday and Thursday, we could actually see a slight chance of a scattered cloud or shower in and around the neighborhood. Now, the smoke's going to be with us for the foreseeable future. There's that warm-up come Monday and Tuesday. It's going to cool back to seasonal normals as we get into the week, but could see a little shower activity start to slink into the area come midweek and on into Friday. In the Upper Valley, a cool day tomorrow, a breezy day, not gusty, but breezy. We're back into the 90s or close to it Monday and Tuesday, but then there's that chance of showers come Wednesday through Friday. Check out that 79 for a high on Thursday for Idaho Falls. We're looking at overnight lows in the Rexburg area down into the 30s tomorrow night with a high only in the 70s, but we'll be close to 90 in the Upper Valley come Monday and Tuesday. There again is that chance for a Wednesday through Friday shower. Central Mountains, same story, only the chance of showers extends into Saturday. Look at those 90s for Monday and Tuesday for salmon. And even Jackson's going to warm up into the middle 80s come Monday and Tuesday. But there's that chance of some scattered clouds and showers as we get into next week. Summertime means scout camp for the Boy Scouts. This is Island Park Scout Camp around the campfire when we could light campfires. Bruce Kuhn sent that picture to us as our spirit of Idaho tonight. Certainly the summer spirit of Idaho. And if you've got a spirit of Idaho like Bruce had one, Send it to me, won't you? Scannon at KIDK.com is the email box, and we'll be back with more. Come on. The Anno State Bengals football team is gearing up for their season, and there's a group of players with a special bond. Julia Cox, she has more. Terrence Carey, left tackle. Wes Wingrove, left guard. Christian Deem, center. Thomas Vizorka, and I'm a right guard. Skylar Phillips, right tackle. Meet the offensive line. They're big, they're strong, and they're also best friends. I love, I love my guys. I love the camaraderie. I love my, uh, I love Coach Trox. He does a great job at explaining everything, and it just, we just come together and we just make. It's, it's a family, you know. It's not, we're not five individual positions. We're one family, and I love it. What I like the most is that we're different. We're not like any other position group on the field. We just, we're always out here having fun and stuff. Like, I mean, I know everybody else is having fun, but we're just always joking around. And even with Coach Trox, you know, we're still just always having a good time. Like, I'm, like what I mean right here, just we're always looking to have fun. They're going on playing together for their third year and have built an unbreakable bond. You know, I enjoy uh, meetings with them. They're all funny. You know, they're all hardworking guys, so. That's what I enjoy the most. Obviously the humor, on and off the field, but you know, favorite part honestly is just on the field, when we have to get stuff done, we know when to get stuff done, and that's my favorite part of these guys. And they're always there for each other. That backup, you know, that's kind of, it happened a few days ago, you know, I was setting on the nose, and you know, got a punch and I kept setting back, but then Tom and Wes both converged on the same guy, so I was just sitting there watching, and it was just, I just started laughing, I don't know. It was, that's probably the best part is knowing I got guys backing me up. They're also on the same page after one of their guys score. What goes through my mind? I have a lot of excitement and then knowing that, you know, I don't have to run 40 yards down the field. I can, you know, run down there, celebrate, and then just get off the field. I don't have to worry about, you know, blocking another guy. Thank God I don't have to keep 
doing plays. Thank God we're done. <laughs> they can be a bit distracting while trying to get through an interview, though. <laughs> Do they ever let anyone get through an interview without doing something? No, like that? no. This is this is a regular thing. Um, they do this all the time. They're probably going to do it again. So. All right, flying high, floating in the clouds. One developer is taking this to heart for a new swimming pool in the sky. That's next on Channel Three Eyewitness News. Well, a developer in Arizona is taking swimming to new heights. Jeannie Mo, she shows us plans for what many are calling a sky pool. It's a cross between the glass skywalk over the Grand Canyon and a swimming pool. It is the sky pool. Ten stories up, a see-through pool suspended between two luxury apartment blocks in London. I don't know, it seems possible you'd get vertigo while swimming. <laughs> Developer John Mulryan says that when his father first broached the idea... Well, we weren't really sure whether even it was possible. But after a year and a half of consulting with engineering and even aquarium experts, Mulryan says the sky pool is a sure thing. 90 feet long, made out of crystal clear acrylic that's 8 inches thick. Gives whole new meaning to the term skydiving. So you'd have to be careful about diving into this pool. It's only going to be about four feet deep. It may not be among the highest pools, like the Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, or among the deepest pools, like the Nemo 33 in Belgium, or the largest pools, the San Alfonso del Mar in Chile. But the sky pool will make you want to keep your eyes wide open underwater. What are you thinking it would feel like to swim in this pool? Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose we don't 100% we don't know because it's never been done before. But, I mean, uh, the idea was we thought it would feel like, you know, you're kind of swimming through air. Rarified air, the sky pool is for residents, and the apartments being built at Embassy Gardens start at $940,000. Construction won't be complete for another three years. No worries about falling off the pool. The acrylic extends well beyond the water's surface. Skinny dipping in this pool would be very ex exposing. Although, you're, you know, you're 10 floors up, so you've got a little bit of protection. We'd look like tadpoles up there in this human aquarium in the sky. Genie Mose. Where's the lifeguard sit? CNN. <laughs> He'll sit on the edge. New York. Wow. I, yeah. yeah. I can't even swim in a normal pool, so I don't think this is going to work. But yeah. Oh my goodness. We'll see you back.